it, guys. Cheers. Cheers, man. Cheers Good to, to see you. You too, man. It's Doc. Been, been a minute. Cheers, buddy. He's it's drinking a very light beer today. That is very light. It's very uh, it's seltzer. I was, was going to ask if it's seltzer. Is it a uh, nitro seltzer? Is that why there's no <laughs> bubbles in it? There's no bubbles. <laughs> Non-carbonated, non-flavored seltzer water. Alcohol-free. Oh, wow. yeah. <laughs> you used to call it water back in the day. Water. Water yeah. zero. Now but it's yeah, water people zero. don't, people don't buy it unless you call it seltzer, so <laughs> we just call it seltzer. Seltzer, yeah. Well, guys, thanks for having me into downtown. Uh, this location is incredible this building is i mean just when i thought i couldn't be more impressed uh with the tempe location i come in here and then i see you beautiful guys and it ruins the whole thing but <laughs> well one thing phoenix has that tempe doesn't have is an official brewer's table which is what ah. we're sitting at today and we'll be hosting beer dinners here pretty soon an official brewer's table yeah this is specifically yeah. for uh doc be- and in the the food team's enjoyment Doc and his 19 closest friends. Yeah. <laughs> That's the first time I've ever sat at my table. Really? <laughs> well, you should be at the head of it then. I guess, I guess we got the right. It's like a two-headed city. serpent. <laughs> it is. Yes, it is. This is why I was like, let's sit over here. Yeah, I like that. I wanted to claim it. You got a knife? I'm going to carve my name in it. Uh, we got something. You could use like the tripod here. Bend a piece of metal <laughs> off of that. But uh, uh, So uh, when, this just opened, right? Just recently within... When did the spot open? Uh, we opened it in phases. Downstairs opened just before Thanksgiving. Downstairs <coughs> meaning where we're at here, floor yep. level. Right. Yeah, ground floor level. And then the mezzanine trailed behind by um, three months or so and opened mid-February. Okay. And uh, how's the reception been? It's been great. Uh, you know, it was a good time of year to open weather-wise. Yeah. So it opened fast and hard, and everyone seems to hang out there until there's no seats and then migrate downstairs. But... Downstairs has an outdoor area too, so with, even when the weather's nice, people hang out down here. It's a little more shady yeah. until we build some kind of shade cover up up top. But you know, we did it. I would say properly up there. There's lots of tables, lots of trees, lots of plants. It's beautiful um, up there. Grass carpet throughout. Yeah, and soft really, grass carpet too. Yeah, when you walk well, across it's, it, it's 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 nice on the feet. It's been trampled down <laughs> and peed on and pooped on. <laughs> sorry, sorry about Tra- that. Yeah. It was mostly Doc. <laughs> Yeah. And that's why uh, you have the brewer's table. <laughs> that was just... We don't let them poop or pee down here. <laughs> In the building. You have to go to Tempe. Make me to go to the doesn't mean he's not going to. upstairs. And... <laughs> but we have a proper bar up there, too. And we yeah. built the uh, back of the bar. So the tap handles are actually coming out of the side of the silo. Yeah. That spans from the ground floor up to the, the top of the mezzanine bar. You can see it out there. And that's kind of fun. Cause yeah. I haven't really seen that anywhere. I didn't even put the two together. Like I saw the silo out here, and then when we were upstairs, I saw that the tap handles were. But I, is it a working silo? Is it? Are you guys? Well, there's no grain in it, yeah. but it works for uh, for visual effect and to <laughs> be the tallest draft tower in the world. Is that? It does it? Is it? I mean, I haven't checked the math, but that thing's 20 feet tall. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm in, man. I'm in. I'm going to start claiming it. I haven't it's, seen yeah. any tap panels coming out of a silo yet. Yeah. So that was kind of a fun, fresh idea. But yeah, it's fun up there. We have bands play and, you know, we put up a screen. So by five o'clock ish, oh. when the sun's a little lower, it's shady and we got misters. It's, it's really nice. Like yesterday was what, 91 or yeah. thereabouts. And uh, we had a pretty big event up there and it, it was i was worried about it being too hot but it wasn't it was very comfortable and i would i would think that just kind of the way that it that's kind of built and that i, I would think you get a lot of shade in the afternoon like it pretty well, early yeah as about f- five o'clock it's completely shaded which is great i mean that's perfect timing yeah right? yeah so it's a little little toasty um saturday afternoons but we're covering half of it with like a trellis with okay. a of ivy growing on it Oh, nice. That'll create some nice shade, but yeah, and it's kind of cool too because it's only one story up, so it's I wouldn't, I wouldn't really even, even though we call it the rooftop bar, it's you know some rooftop bars are thirteen stories For up sure. and you're <laughs> super disconnected from the street vibe, yeah. and <clears throat> we're not. You can see people up there from the street. You can see the street from the mezzanine, and yeah. feels a little more connected to the down uh, downstairs space. So it's cool. Yeah, I dig it, man. I dig it. So well. Original location in Tempe, and then you guys opened the Chandler location, right? Yeah, we opened Chandler location three weeks before a certain virus spread through the, uh, three the weeks. world. Three weeks. <laughs> forget what it was called, but yeah. um, at any rate, yeah, so we opened strong and then closed just as strong. Yeah. And then we reopened, you know, like everybody else did in uh, late summer 20, 
2020, I guess okay. it was. Yeah, so that's going strong too. It's how was that? How how was the decision made to for Chandler to be that second location for Battle House? Well, you know, I guess we have kind of aspirations to open a few of these, and um, downtown Chandler has a, a smaller but similar vibe to the other two places we're located, and that there's yeah. lots of synergy with other. Uh, you know, brewery or beer forward concepts and restaurants and bars. It's a walkable area. Um, I already had a, a, pr- a prior business in that space, so I had a yeah. lease there and had kind of control of that space. And we like the um, the balance of indoor outdoor. It's almost half and half, so it's got a yeah. big old patio, nice proportionate to the inside, and its own bar out there. So yeah. it's an end cap. It's got good visibility. It ended up being, and this is. Uh, this wasn't built at the time, but they built the massive parking garage for uh, all of down, yeah. down Chandler, like pretty much dumps out to our patio. So, Which is yeah. a great thing. Yeah, right. it's a good yeah. thing. <laughs> yeah. We also had lots of friends down there. The guy that owns the building that the pedal house is in, in Chandler. Yeah. Guy named Peter, a little bit of a rascal. Wouldn't you agree, Doc? <laughs> a little bit. A little bit. Uh, great way to, to <laughs> say that, a rascal. Uh, in the best way possible. <laughs> yeah. And we had already been buying kegs i believe or, or something from him that uh was for the brewery so yeah. you know we had a friendship and a relationship and just kind of made sense yeah nice yeah. so when, when you guys are starting to expand out uh, out you know outside of tempe um you know we've talked about the beer before and and uh met with somebody yesterday who's from out of town just moved here uh you know is, is a chef wants to really kind of understand the food and beverage scene loves beer I'm like, where we're going to Petal House in Tempe, you know? So uh, that was... Cheers to you, my brother. Dude, absolutely. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, absolutely. And he's looking at the beers, and he's like, I- I'm looking for an IPA. And, and, the, and the bartender was like, dude, we've got a brand new hazy IPA. And he's like, these seem like very simple beers. I'm like, they're, they're like, if you're looking for a pale ale, that's the pale ale you want to get. If you're looking for a Pilsner, so Doc always and Well, Doc's the man. But uh, well, combine that with the space too, right? Because we're sitting at the bar. We're, we're both big dudes, so I'm like, it's a little warm for us to be outside, right? It's only like 85, but <laughs> I'm get still the meat sweats or yeah, something. Exactly. <laughs> so we're sitting at the bar, being able to see outside, and he was just blown away. He's like, this place is beautiful. You know? Yeah, that's and then, cool. And all aspects of it. Yeah. Well, I think Doc and I are pretty aligned on um, true to style when it comes to brewing, from ingredients to flavor and alcohol levels and that kind of thing you know we'll we'll mess around with um i guess you could call it non-traditional beers every now and then because you got to kind of mix it up and oftentimes people are calling for those type of things but our core beers are all i mean i always describe it as as close to what you'll get in the country of its origin as you can probably find in the united states yep at least in arizona i try my best for that and then if we get the opportunity to enter it in competitions we get ultimate feedback from blind judges don't know yeah. if we're the most popular brewery in the world or anheuser bush yeah uh, and they they just judge it based upon the style and yeah. we get feedback based upon that so that's kind of how if we make adjustments to the recipe it's based upon that it seems like both you guys are very open to like you want that feedback you want that critical feedback that you know to make it uh, better it. Yeah. yeah yeah now w- what i've always loved too um is you know doc's ability to make beer but also he loves food he loves food right uh, you know being friends with tell yeah <laughs> <laughs> i think there's some in your beard uh in your teeth yeah Old wine food in my <laughs> brain <Fingernails. laughs> but you know being friends with doc on facebook and you get a you know a little personal inside look and, and seeing the stuff that he cooks at home and it's like at first i was like dude where where is he going because you know i know he works you know you guys work all the time i'm like where you know but i'm like oh it's at home doc's making mm. this stuff at home so so for you, uh, you know, as much of my urge is to talk about beer the whole time because that's what I do. This is a taste of AZ, so, mm. <laughs> so we're going to talk about the food. So, Doc, how does that all kind of play into you making beer knowing this food is incredible too? Oh, food and beer is, is a marriage. Yeah. You, know, you can't really have one without the other. I mean, you can, but it's boring. Yeah, so, sure. yeah, you, and you really want to – the beautiful thing about beer is it pairs so easy with so many foods. And uh, I typically choose foods that pair well with beer because I always have a beer in my hand after five o'clock. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, that's the brewer's table. Like, so I think he kind of downplayed that a little bit. Doc created himself his own table in this place. 
to present his beer. He had nothing food. to do with it. <laughs> <laughs> I found out today there's a table, but it's <laughs> Brewer's table. It is an honor, <laughs> Doc. Okay, so that, you guys do <laughs> and food and beer. Yeah. <laughs> well, so how, do, how does that all, I mean, how do you keep that balance, right? Because a lot of times you go to a place that has really good food and the beer is like, okay, right? Or the, the food's really good or the, you, you know what I'm saying, yeah. right? You have one or the other. Uh, how are you guys well, able to do that? So Tempe, which has evolved in a more of a, a squiggly, zigzaggedly or zigzagged line than a straight line in that we've changed course quite a few times over the last six and a half years. But when you have a space as big as Tempe, which I think hovers around 380 seats, which is a lot, 14,000 yeah. square feet, you, you got to kind of have both to fill those seats. And sure. at times, well, we always had good beer. Um, but to fill 380 seats, even the best beer in the world's not going to do it necessarily. You got to have atmosphere, you got to have service, and you got to yeah. have good food. And yeah. at one point, it was actually after our big remodel in 2016, we we're struggling so much with this kind of farm to table food program, European style food program we had before the remodel that we literally had like anxiety and stress about the the kitchen ops so we scaled it way back like so the food was okay. kind of shitty and we got it out quick but one one at one end to the other we, kind yeah of, one yeah. extreme to the other we realized look we gotta focus just as much on the food i mean we got doc for beer and his brew team we never had any anxiety about that but yeah. getting the food right and consistent and be able to pump volume that yeah. was the biggest lift but you know, just like everything, you just kind of evolve over time. And I mean, I think it sounds kind of crazy, but I'd say between labor and food, those are the two biggest things we kind of spend our time on throughout the day, it seems like. Yeah. And uh, the food, is, you just got to constantly be evolving it um, if you're going to have any chance of the food also bringing people in. Sure. I mean, the best thing is people want a good food and good beer and yeah. Pedal House pops into their head. You know, it means we've kind of done our job, but it's important, but it's also a struggle. For sure. For, well, I, I'm sure, uh, you know, that was that was pre-COVID, right? And then COVID, just the whole, you know, flipping the table over, right? <laughs> basically for everybody. Yeah, it was fun. Yeah. <laughs> it was, uh, no day was, uh, was any sa- it wasn't the same as the last day. But uh, so when that, when that happened and things just kind of got all thrown, right? Nobody knew really what to do. Uh, how, how did you guys, first of all, get through that? Like, what was, what was the strategy once you were like, all right, this could be. Yeah, looking back, the- um, I feel like we navigated that, those choppy iceberg filled waters really, really well. Yeah. Um, I mean, we towed the line between taking it seriously, being precautious, having pages and pages of protocols and what to do with every possible situation. But as I like to describe it, not oversteering the turn. So we weren't that place that had chairs stacked up everywhere where people couldn't sit. We didn't have, you know, the plexiglass, um, just everywhere and creating yeah. a real sort of clinical, sterile, the uninviting vibe The anti-vibe of what you're going no, for. I think atmosphere yeah. and vibe, as we call it at Pedal House, is, is really important to us in hospitality. So, you know, we just did our best to make our guests feel like, you know, there's they could go out and enjoy a beer and not be stressed. You know, yeah. we have a large outdoor patio that really helped. For we were sure. able to spread the tables out. That helped. We had sanitation protocols. Um, all kinds of testing protocols, yada, yada. So, you know, Pedal House really rebounded pretty quick. Okay. And I think for a while there in Tempe, this might have been late summer 2020. A lot of places hadn't opened the bars for a while. If you had a number six license, you weren't allowed to be open. That's right. Yeah. And then the yard, which is near us, was just didn't open for whatever reason. So we built up a lot of momentum during that time. And, um, you know, during those seven weeks that we were closed, you know, we first, I don't know, was it three, four weeks before we, well, we just kind of let everyone just yeah. chill and figure out what was going on in the world. But then we kind of picked ourselves up and we decided, look, we're going to keep paying our managers. We never stopped paying them. And there's quite a few at the time, but we kind of like banded together and 
resurfaced all the floors and uh, reskinned the furniture and built new planners and painted and kind of looked at it like, all right, we're just going to approach this like we're reopening for the first time and, yeah. you know, kind of really go for it. Utilize that time, right? Yeah. That time that you have and, uh, is... There were some beers and I think a little Jameson involved in some of those <laughs> of sessions, right, Doc? Oh, man, there was a... <laughs> oh, Doc. Yeah, I don't know if we want to tell that story. <laughs> we There's one in particular. Got, I but honestly, <laughs> like in a really weird way, I look fondly on those days of hanging out together and it was almost like soldiers sitting on the bunker after a battle and just yeah. kind of like being able to let their breath out and relax and that built a lot of camaraderie and bonded through those tough times and again in a weird way i almost have fond memories of that yeah i yeah. do too it was actually the weather was great we spent a lot of time in the backyard you know we yeah. all america in general we all work too hard for what so one day we could stop working so hard i mean yeah that that was a couple of weeks of really nice you know going into the brewery doing a little bit of work and then going home and just chilling because we weren't allowed to go to the bar and yeah I really, it I was really that forced that. pause button, like right where yeah. none of us would have hit that button ourselves. No, been so, you know, so not to mention the rest of the world stops. You didn't feel like yeah. you're missing out. You didn't yeah. feel like the cars were flying past you or the careers were flying past you. We were all yeah. stopped at the same stop. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, it was like, what the hell? How long is this train? It's right. a long train uh, coming through. Uh, should we should we regroup on a beer? Yeah, if you want to throw yeah. a couple questions at Doc, I'll refill you. If you oh, want. excellent. Oh, yeah, dude, I'm going to hammer him with some questions. <laughs> it's actually a perfect segue. And I'll, it's your choice, man, whatever. What, I'll oh, finish up. Oh, okay. Or, or whatever. Yeah, your choice. Oh, I'm just going to get up. I'll get you something. Okay. <laughs> so COVID hits, right? Um, in a weird way, uh, I was like, well, maybe hopefully this means, you know, Doc will start canning his beer and we'll start to have that in the stores. But uh, did it at all? Were you guys were you guys canning during COVID? Like We ordered a Seamer, okay. but it's more Crowlers. Uh, okay. So okay. I, I'll make the statement here. I was very, that was the only anxiety I really had. Yeah. One, did, there was anxiety. There was, you know, is my family going to make it through COVID? Sure. Yeah. Everybody did. It was, well, I mean, we knew a lot of people, so I don't want to say everybody did. It was a pretty serious thing. But, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, getting cans. We ordered a can seamer. Uh, we ended up ordering a second one. There's one here and there's one in Tempe. We just don't have room for cans in Chandler. Yeah. Okay. But, uh, we uh, got it late in the game, so we were doing growlers or whatever we could. Okay. Uh, luckily, we didn't have to fill Ziploc bags like another brewery chain I'm aware of. Uh, had was to. it really? Ziploc bags? It was pretty bad. You couldn't get growlers. You couldn't get anything. We just happened to have a supply. And yeah. We were offering a buyback program for anyone's growlers. Uh, yeah. Because we... We weren't refilling them. We had to sanitize them because everybody was taking it very serious. We'd put the growlers in. We'd have like a deposit thing outside. They'd put them in a milk crate. And then we'd take the milk crate, run it through the dishwasher, which would sanitize the outside of it and bleach it. And then we yeah. then we felt safe to touch them. And then we'd sanitize the insides of them and then rinse them and then put them back into circulation. Yeah, yeah. I was well. I was telling Doc that I was hoping that can canning uh, is you know in our future. In the future, uh, well, no, we were talking really about like during COVID hot like so. Um, you're talking about the you know the restaurant being able to you know the, keep the patio open and all this stuff and like what was the pivot for beer right and and I said, God, we were not in a great position during COVID as far as uh, <laughs> beer sales go. And that was the thing you said that gave you anxiety, right? <laughs> was the a lot of accounts, yeah, sitting there like, what are they going to do with when they open back up? They're still going to serve that old beer. Are we yeah, going to ah, be able to okay. get it out? And, yeah. So uh, not a, not a concern of uh, of uh, is this account going to still take my beer? It's more of like is that beer that they have going to? Well, probably our, both. Our but, reputation is yeah, sitting yeah. on, and people were very forgiving after COVID, sure. very forgiving. But we we kept brewing. Uh, we knew that the ale yeast strain just needed to let that go, but loggers take longer, so we, because it was just two weeks, right? Yeah. To mm -hmm. flatten the curve, so For we, sure. we kept our logger strains going until we filled all of our tanks up, and then we couldn't brew anymore, and then. Yeah came out of it with a lot of lager yeah <laughs> it was like oh this stuff's fresh ready to go and i think yeah. uh, the advantage we we let some beer go that wasn't as fresh and yeah. uh no reason to stockpile old beer you know, yeah you're better off selling the new stuff and i think we bought back beer from some I accounts so. we, we swapped out with the accounts that made it yeah, yeah we're always gonna serve the, dump bad beer down the drain before that's we one serve of, it. I, that's why i mean one of the main reasons i love yeah. you guys is like it's 
yeah, like you said, like I hadn't even put my finger on it, like the service aspect of it. Like I've never gone to Pedal House and not gotten good service. Yeah, right. Like oh, that's it, good. And, and you weren't there a, on Tuesday, apparently. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I gotta say, uh, just to echo that. Our our staff is amazing. <laughs> always smile. They're I, always happy. Like they're always like it, it's it's incredible because. Uh, I'm, I have a skewed experience. I get to come in right now before you guys are open, right? I get to talk to you guys and, you know, Doc, let me pour my own beer. Like, it's a big deal, you mm. know, but, but you come in during game time, different places are different. That's a yeah. whole different game. And I, I, it's so good at your guys' place that I, I don't even, it's, it's like I'm being treated when I get there. Yeah. So it's great. Well, that's good to hear. That's, that's also that's hard great. to do consistently because you always get a bad apple here and there. And the volume that Tempe does, I mean, those guys just get crushed. They're yeah. tired. They're, it's just wave after wave after yeah. wave. And if, right. But at the end of the day, it's like you work in a brewery. You got music. And, and one thing I will say about Pedal House, um, almost more so than any other place I've owned, is that our customers tend to be in a pretty good mood. Okay. Because sure. they're in a brewery yeah. and it's sunny out and it's fun and – they're getting their buzz on or what have you. They're there for an event. And that helps a lot. It's you not know, the, when you're it's dealing not the with shitty customers yeah. all day. It's pretty hard to be smiley and happy. Yeah, that's actually a really good point. So, yeah, shout out to the uh, to the customers of Pedal to House our lovely as well. fans and friends. That might be yours. Can you move that over that way a little bit? There we go. Cool. Yeah, sorry. Hey, <laughs> no, no speaking of lagers, yeah. This oh next yeah, beer we I have, brought you is yeah. our Mexican Amber Ooh. Lager. Nice. So what exactly does that I'll, mean? Uh, well, so I'll let Doc explain since he's Mexican the expert. But, um, it's a marketing's play on what really is a Vienna lager. Okay. <laughs> it's an Austrian lager using uh, Vienna malt, or as it's pronounced, Wiener malt. Okay. Okay. I just wanted to brew it because it's Wiener. Wiener malt. I feel like this brought flashbacks. I feel like Doc has said this on the microphone before mm. to me. <laughs> it's fantastic. Well, so Vienna, Vienna lager is, that, that's a Mexican lager. Uh, yeah, so the first emperor of Mexico was was Maximilian, and oh, no he kidding. brought his people and his seeds with him. And they, the American lager was already going, and Texas Hill Country was filling up with brewers. It was a great area to grow and uh, yeah. and brew, and uh, it worked right into you know Mexico as well, right in there. So they started growing, and part of that they were you know chewing corn and spitting it into clay pots and uh, drinking it the next day and. It was uh, uh, more influence from the natives there, but uh, yeah. yeah. The what beer. is that called? What is that called? Was that Chichu? Yeah, or something like that. There's a. I think there's an actual brewery in uh, Denver that has kind Are of those style it? beers. I don't know if they're spitting. <laughs> I don't know, if, but there's something. Yeah, I, I, Dogfish I've, played with that once just yeah, for the fun of it. Yeah, I don't know how popular it'd be to say, yeah. "Hey, we're, our brewers are chewing and spitting yeah. back here." So yeah. it's hard enough getting people to drink beer from recycled water, right? <laughs> Like gray water. water. Is that yeah. what they call recycled? Yeah. Exactly. Poopy water. Well, so, all right. So back, back to the food, right? You, you guys, um, invited us to a, um, a dinner a couple years ago, uh, for the gluten-free menu, mm. which was incredible. You guys rolled out a whole menu of that and you still mm-hmm. do. Right. Yeah. And the beer is, I see some of the beer is gluten reduced as well. Uh, so that had to have been a big, um, I don't know, big, I don't want to say pivot, but a big another big extension for you guys to bring in a whole different group of people. Right. Yeah. So we did the vegan one at the same time, which I think vegans increased a lot in popularity even since we did it four years ago ish. Okay. Yeah. But I've yet to go to a restaurant that wasn't say you know a vegan restaurant. Say it was a whatever restaurant American food, but that <clears throat> did what we do, which is where you flip the menu over and it's actually a, a whole new vegan menu and. <clears throat> excuse me as you mentioned gluten free menu usually you're hunting and pecking for those little v's and those little gfs sure. or you're yeah. frankensteining your own food to make it <laughs> v or gf we're just like let's just not ha- make them have to work so hard to find ah. dishes that they know are going to be vegan plus the guys in the kitchen get more reps making it properly and <clears throat> you know every now and then something will get screwed up but but it is very user friendly for the guests uh, to have those menus kind of separated out. Is it m- meaning like uh, you ha- you have a lot of the ingredients to create these things? So, well, but- yeah. So, for instance, like the burger, we just use a vegan cheese and we use a veggie patty. Okay. But, yeah. you know, it might be this. Uh, in some cases, it's different bread. It just depends if the bread's vegan or not. But yeah. certainly with gluten-free, it's got to be a different kind of bread. So it, it looks and feels like our normal menu. It's just yeah. we've brought in a whole bunch of vegan ingredients, say, or gluten-free ingredients to kind of recreate what you'd get on the other side of the menu. But yeah. 
that's already meeting your dietary restrictions. And yeah, I can't remember exactly what the motivation was to do it, but it was a great idea and people love it. And uh, as you mentioned, Doc, I think all our loggers still are gluten we, reduced. We do the enzyme in every Yeah, logger, so we so. can't say gluten free because oh, yeah. it starts with gluten. But Doc and the guys uh, pull most of it, if not all of it, out with an enzyme. Uh, so I call it almost gluten free. Yeah. I've had a few friends that had real sensitive um, allergies or whatever to uh, reactions to gluten, drink it, and not have a problem. Nice. I don't know if that's the case for everybody, but um, why isn't that done more? Like, why why isn't it done more to? Is it a hard question. process? Is it? Uh, no, it's just an enzyme. Okay. Uh, the trend now is uh, everything hazy. And it removes haze. So ah, it's, that's gotcha. what it was originally developed for was to speed okay. the process up to remove haze, but they just found it reduces gluten. So yeah. they did tests and put more of this enzyme in, and sure enough, it takes the gluten out to where it's undetectable. Uh, wow. So we, the tests that we've done, we don't do it every batch because it's an ELISA test. you got to send it off to a lab. But the ones we've done all came back consistently that it was below 10 parts per million or billion or whatever they measured in. And yeah. that is, that means they can't detect it. They just know it's below that level because yeah. the, the ELISA test can't, it's a very sensitive test, but it yeah. can't get below that. And uh, I think the Celiac Foundation says anything below 20 is considered reasonably safe. Yeah. Uh, so we wow. won't make those. 99.999% that kind of thing. Yeah. Right? So I, I almost <laughs> exclusively drink our German style Pilsner now. I just, I love it. I've not found another beer that scratches the itch quite like it does. Yeah. So I never really, you know, think much about gluten, but we were just in San Diego and uh, we hit a lot of breweries and uh, probably drinking just a lot of normal non-gluten reduced beers. Yeah, and then I had some gluten. meal, I can't remember what it was, but it wasn't a burger, but it's definitely something was like loaded with gluten. Yeah. And I like almost crashed. Like I was so oh. sleepy and tired. I just wanted to crawl into bed and like just had no energy. I was yeah. just thinking to myself, like, what the heck? And something stuck in my mind, like one of my buddies realized he had a gluten sensitivity because that same thing would happen to him. He'd yeah. crash really hard after eating a pizza or drinking beer. And I was like, huh, I wonder if that would happen that day in San yeah. Diego because it doesn't happen here, but I'm also drinking gluten-reduced beer, yeah. you know, yeah. so I'd, I'm going to look into that a little bit more. But for people that are sensitive, man, it's so great to have so many, well, I guess it's like three really high-quality beers that are probably not going to affect your gluten sensitivity yeah yeah which is one nor- brewery and, and you, you hear that a lot people are like dude i love beer like especially with what i do they're like oh what do you do i'm like i drink beer for a living pretty much you know so i, I talk with people about beer a lot uh but they're like oh, i love beer but i just you know I, it just impacts me right so to know that you know to be able to recommend to them like cider and stuff like that and, and you know your guys's beer it's yeah it's pretty incredible yeah well plus they're all lagers so they're all lighter to begin with yeah which then transitions great into the wonderful food you guys have, right? Uh, the fish and chips yesterday was fantastic. <laughs> it's mm. happy. Uh, so beyond the, the gluten-free side of things, like the, the I, I, how do you describe your menu to people? And is it the same at each spot? Um, it varies a little bit. Tempe's okay. got the biggest, most robust menu, but they've also been open the longest. Chandler's a kitchen half the size, so there's some things we just can't pull off. Okay. Phoenix is somewhere in the middle. Um, we're still trying to get our sea legs in the back of house a bit, so yeah. we're not putting too much on them. Well, I heard your dishwasher singing back there earlier. Oh yeah, she was excited. Like she was, she she's was belting out some tunes. Yeah, Sweet. we're gonna mic her up. Yeah, she should be trying out. Have for her out uh, here for the podcast, dude. That 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 American speaks Idol. to the culture of the place, right? Like the, she's back there singing, having a great oh, time. That's brilliant, <laughs> love it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so so sorry. So uh, yeah, I mean, it's just it's you know, kind of fairly pedestrian American food, but we do try to put a little extra love and care into it and yeah. use, you know, better ingredients where we can. And, and like I mentioned earlier, like literally a week doesn't go by where we're not thinking about the food. And yeah. in fact, we're about to, we've been doing this bottomless breakfast for years and years and it's like 12 bucks you get a beer and as much freaking food as you can eat right it's not, i'm so glad i didn't know about that ridiculous <laughs> but at the end of the day it's like a cafeteria scoop of scrambled eggs yeah cafeteria scoop of potatoes and um i think bacon but not only is it 
a, a tough for the guys in the kitchen when people are just like, oh, just, I want another refill, but I don't want the bacon. I want more egg. And it's just like a nightmare, right? Gosh, so we're trying right. to streamline things a little bit. So my point being is we're actually scrapping that pretty soon. But to replace it, we came up with two gourmet breakfasts. And one is kind of um, our interpretation of an English breakfast with like the mushrooms and the beans and the oh. sausage. And I think we're going to start with scrambled, but eventually you'll be able to get the egg cooked to order. And then a southwest version of that, which has tortillas and black beans. Now, I, so I'm not real familiar with that. Like, what is that style of English breakfast? Yeah. Like, oh, it's English like breakfast? if you go to England and you get, they might even have another name for it because it'd be kind of probably silly to call it the English breakfast. They might call it the standard or whatever it is. Yeah. But, it, you know, it's like baked beans, like okay. Bush's baked beans. Yeah. Like, that's yeah. a big thing in England to get with your yeah. breakfast. Never not knew out that. here. No, no, really? Always with barbecue, always backyard. Like, that beans was. Beans on toast. Yeah, I've so heard of that. Be like I've two heard of slices it, yeah. of white toast. It'll be um, sautéed mushrooms. Okay, usually a charred tomato, baked beans. You know, eggs, sausage, bacon, oh, and potatoes. Yeah, but um, I'm in, man. Yeah, I'll show you a picture <laughs> after we're done here. What it looks like, but it's it's a hearty, beautiful. Has a little more of a chef flavor and approach to it. Much better breakfast and should be enough to fill up most humans. <laughs> And then, like I said, Southwest version of that. But that's just kind of an example of like, all right, let's evolve this breakfast. Yeah. It's getting stale. It, it doesn't represent our brand from the standpoint of it's it's just sort of cafeteria looking type of deal. And then, uh, like every season, we're trying to come up with new dishes. You know, some these days our biggest battle is just pricing. Like okay. good old uh, frozen cod. Yeah is like quadruple the price it used yeah. to be so we're getting crushed on fish and chips even though we're buying fresh cod now just a slightly cheaper oddly enough but um and then uh chicken wings four times what Your they rice. used to be oh, man. everything's a lot more expensive and i get that consumers get frustrated but they just have no idea what's going on behind the scenes sure you know? yeah uh, those guys are heroes back there yeah. I, lo I love our whole staff, but they're so yeah. different. The front of the house, they're happy. You know, it's the same people we've had. Yeah. Back of the house, every kitchen in America, there's been turnover. The costs are high. It's yeah. a thankless job. Uh, brutal job. That's got, a brutal job back we've there. We've got guys that it's keep tough. showing up every day. Hot they're working greasy. long yeah. days. And they do Especially the Tempe, man. Like, <laughs> yeah. The number of burgers those guys cook in a day yeah. is, like, ridiculous. It's hot. Well, but, but also, you know, credit to the front of the house staff, right? Like, they, they deal with a... a, a equal amount of shit oh yeah and, and they got to put a smile on oh yeah yeah <laughs> like you gotta, See, they're on stage <laughs> yeah at least exactly. the guys in the back can drop f-bombs go to the back no one cares but Touch some garbage bags i've been there yeah uh, <laughs> <laughs> yep yep so how so what's uh how do you how do you keep this all because because i know this goes you know for you julian this goes beyond uh you know pedal house i mean there's sake house right next door which is also yours what, what else is yours here uh, so, Pedal House actually just acquired the coffee shop next door, which is oh, called Kavi. Okay. Partly because we were sharing so many resources already, like yeah. walk-ins and staff and events, and it just kind of made sense. But So, it's in the same building as Pedal House called Kavi Coffee. Okay. We do events there. Obviously, your buddy's getting married in there. Luke, like yeah. Luke, Luke, yeah, a couple, uh, co was it weeks or months? I forget what he yeah, said. Yeah, I think December, he said. Uh, oh, December. December, okay. yeah. I should know. That's so wild, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> you weren't you weren't invited, I take it? <laughs> I was invited, yeah. Luke, uh, yeah, sorry, buddy. Yeah, I don't remember the date exactly. I think it's December. <laughs> Sometime in December. <laughs> but it's here. At any rate, yeah. So, we, we, uh, we do events like weddings and, you know, whatever, private parties. Obviously, we have a coffee shop. Um, on the last Saturday of the week, uh, we actually do a drag brunch in there, which oh, really? is always lively and yeah. fun. Um, and then Pedal House, which, uh, like I said, just recently opened that 3,000 square foot mezzanine. So second story patio yeah. for all practical purposes does events up there. So those two are real tied together. And then the sushi and sake place, sake house is basically sort of in the building yeah it's its own little entity but which it looks pretty there's cool common well. ownership and yeah. yeah the sushi's outstanding yeah some of the best i've ever had i need to go there yeah it's really good good sake list. yeah yeah good vibe doc, yeah doc just <laughs> i really smiled I, yeah. Uh, yeah i got to go there <laughs> during their opening parties and julian happened to sit at the table with me ah. and uh that uh 
uh, guaranteed we got to try some cool. I couldn't pronounce. The, I don't yeah. know what half the stuff is. I've been to, <laughs> I've been to the commercial places to get sushi, so I didn't sure. know what to order. But that was incredible. Yeah, yeah our sushi thank you for the invite legit. too. Like uh, you, you invited us out to that. Oh, good. We I thought you were being sarcastic. No, 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 you did. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, you, know, you know how you know who kind of ends up getting invited to those things. It's like the last 200 people I texted with. Right? <laughs> I just like, <laughs> just I don't have time to go through 2,000 contacts. And yeah, just right? Like, yeah, just rapid fire. <laughs> You're thinking, this guy's being an asshole. I'm like, no, thank you, Julie. <laughs> no, well, the, the, the whole, uh, you know, big fan of you guys, you know, and, and seeing these, you know, even things beyond, expand beyond Pedal House, it's just really, really cool to see. Uh, but Pedal House specifically, um, what's the vision uh, w- with this? And I know, two, you know, three years ago, you asked somebody what their vision is, and then COVID hits. And it's One thing I just thought of related to the food, um, so I wanted to touch on that. It's like yeah. our pretzel is a really good example. We're probably yeah. on the fourth different pretzel we've had in six or seven years because we keep finding better ones or we keep looking yeah. for better ones. And the one we have now is the best by far we've ever had. It's, it's big. It's cooked properly. Um, and we now on Wednesdays offer this, what we're calling a Bavarian board, which is uh, kind of anchored by the pretzel. And I'm going to cheat and look at this text because I'll forget the ingredients, but <laughs> it's got beer brat. So it's got a you know, brat that's chopped up that comes with it. Pickled pepper, do peppers, soprasada, Mediterranean olive medley, <laughs> prosciutto, house mustard, maple butter, and house beer blanche beer cheese. Damn. Oh, so really you'll good. see a picture of it probably floating around in here somewhere. He's but like, it, it, and it's half off on Wednesday. So basically, uh, you can get I forget the exact deal, but two beers and that. Bavarian pretzel board for I think it's 19 bucks Ooh. which is normally, two beers? normally 38 yeah. so two 16 ounce beers and that huge platter for 19 bucks normally the platter would be 19 bucks yeah. if not more I think it's 24 normally but anyways that's just an example of like I'm not going to just accept the same old pretzel if we can find a better one how do you do that? Like, how do you, like, is there like a pretzel Facebook group or something? <laughs> just got to find the right people. Maybe. It's probably <laughs> there is. a freaking yes. <laughs> Facebook group for everything else. But uh, sometimes, you know, maybe I'll see a good pretzel on Instagram and I'll do some research on where it came from. We'll yeah. s- search it out. Like, we, I found one one time that way, but it was on the East Coast and it was just cost prohibitive to get it out here yeah uh these guys are out of san diego i I can't remember if they approached us or or how that works sometimes you know our food vendors are like hey this is a new pretzel product we're carrying we'll we'll, we'll r&d it as we say so we'll try it yeah how does it hold up you know how does it taste what's it how does it look yada yada but you know that's just one thing we're constantly doing that with all our breads yeah um vegetables even meat and some of it's you know, we're being forced to due to pricing, but a lot sure. of it really is just about the best quality that we can provide without having to charge so much that it's off putting to guests. So yeah. it's just a constant light pressure on evolving that menu. Yeah. It's a pain in the ass. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like I was like, man, but, well, what, it blew me away with the beer blanche uh, cheese. That's really because that's that's a really good beer. I love that beer. Like that's one of my. I was. I don't think it was on the menu yesterday. Was it the beer cheese? No, no, no. The oh, beer, beer blanche. blanche. Yeah, should have been. Oh yeah, we still have it. Was it? That's right, our third best seller. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> I, that's I like that a perfect beer. example of a true to style beer. I mean, yeah. Doc's getting his yeast from West Mall, and he's using actual Moroccan orange peel, not Moroccan orange peel syrups or flavorings. Yeah. Actual coriander seeds. Um, and that beer has won back-to-back gold medals, but that that's as close as you're going to get. It's probably even better than some of the Belgian beers you're going to drink sure. in Belgium. Yeah. And the German-style Pilsner. You know, it's funny. I used to drink a lot of German beers, including in Germany and out here. Um, then we opened, and I really didn't. I was just drinking ours. And then I went to a German bar here in town recently. I'm like, you know what? Well, they obviously didn't have our beer, so I'm like, sweet i'm gonna try some german beers yeah and i tried four different ones and they all sucked compared to our <laughs> german style yeah uh lager and, you, and i think the clear reason is because that beer had to travel an immense distance over time to get yeah. here there's no way it can be as fresh crisp clean as the beer you're gonna get in arizona for sure <clears throat> so next year we're going back to germany and we'll drink it at the source and yeah see if uh 
it's the same, better or worse than this German style lager that Doc brews. I got to say, it's pretty good over there. <laughs> it's pretty good. In fact, if we bring ours over there, ours is going to have to travel. And it just, oh, our, uh, ours would probably suck over there for that same reason. We got to figure something. Get me involved in this. I'll figure out the logistics. Doc yeah. brewing in Europe, right? We got to do some like oh, you know, be, Doc's European vacation or that, something, yeah. right? Ah, I love that. Uh, yeah. I might be able to as long as it yeah. doesn't turn into I've, Bernie. What was it? I've brewed we overseas. Yeah. <laughs> How much beer are you willing to bring back, Julie? Because uh, I much? brew overseas, we'll probably have to bring it back because I'll probably make it extra hoppy. <laughs> they won't be able to. <laughs> well, no, I, I think it's 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 cool that uh, highlighting. I mean, that, that that's kind of the marketing aspect of it too. That I really love what you guys do is. Uh, to, I mean, it's not just beer cheese. This is like beer cheese made from beer blanche, the award winning, gold medal winning, yeah, whip beer, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and so how, that's got to be different than what a lot of people's beer cheese is, right? Because it's a different style than most people would use. It's a perfect style. Everybody should use a unhopped or lightly hopped beer. Okay. Uh, and the wheat beers typically have less hops, just enough to balance. Uh, yeah, hops don't cook well. Okay. Yeah. Uh, hops, fresh hops do go well with cheese pairing. You know, sharp sharp cheddars and an IPA is incredible, mm. but you don't, wouldn't necessarily want to cook them together. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's Brewer's it's weird. table, baby. Yeah, sharp oh. cheddar and IPA. Oh, yeah. Bring it I on, can pal. talk about cheese and beer Simple. all day. Yeah. Uh, my favorite dish uh, <laughs> is our uh, Mediterranean beer. platter. <laughs> in Tempe, we do it. We make our own pita with, uh, we use the pizza dough. And okay. we throw it in the oven without ingredients, and it puffs up like pita. And uh, they cut that into wedges, and they serve it with the baba ganoush and hummus, and uh, they grill feta cheese. It's like a chunk that big yeah uh, and they throw it in the pizza oven and get a little crispy on the outside and then they bring it out and it doesn't melt like regular cheeses yeah that there i would say for the feta cheese definitely order the beer blanche okay. put them in your mouth at the same time and chew it with the beer in your mouth chew the cheese and you you will it will just combine the two of them it meshes not like wine where it contrasts it just comes together as one uh however for the whole mediterranean platter i, I would say go with the pilsner because yeah. all the other stuff on it is just incredible for a pilsner i literally see foresee a cheese and beer pairing dinner coming that was born out of this conversation today <laughs> oh I hope yeah so. let's, let's I start hope so. planning it right now yeah. awesome i'll come here with the, i'll take a couple pictures do my part <laughs> <laughs> no, like that's it up. Yeah, that was that was the whole the whole goal here was like I, I'm gonna leave today with setting up somehow I'm gonna eat and drink somehow right? <laughs> in the future with these guys. Uh, well, no, I mean that's that's what uh, the what I love about this whole thing is that it, it's all it's all n nothing necessarily outshines the other thing, right? Like I mean there are you know Doc's beer is world class, but then your your service is world class, and then the then then the food you know so I, I like that it, it's all. You get the whole full experience. Yep, takes a village. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think it's like a it's like a, a three legged in our payroll, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a three legged table. If one of the one of the legs is short, it falls for sure. So you got to have yep. the service, the food, and the beer to make it work. Yeah. So let me. I was going to ask you this. Uh, so was that your input into the beer cheese? Was to say, hey, this would be a great beer for the cheese, or is that just kind of the the food staff understanding what what doc does and and i think that was julian just okay he just knew the, the middle the, the liaison right the here common right? Sense. Hey, sell the blanche it's about to turn yeah. <laughs> we're not selling blanche fast <laughs> <enough. For laughs> <mental> cheese. <laughs> uh, no, that's sure. why doc and i kind of were uh, a good partnership because he had very strong beer background and i had restaurant background and yeah. together we put hopefully put together a, a business that is a good vibe and good environment in which to drink great beer. Yeah. And eat great cheese, cheese. great pretzels and great Shishito peppers. My yeah. buddy is a huge mm -hmm. fan. Uh, we came, we went a couple years ago before COVID 40th birthday. My wife brought all my friends out like that I grew up with. And my buddy loves Shishito peppers and he saw it on the menu. He, he like housed the whole plate, man. Didn't even let anybody else have any. Well, we put <laughs> a little like, bruise yeast on there. Is it an extra kicker? Ah, is that yeah, what that is? A little is? lemon. Like, Oh. Mm -hmm. What would you that think do? of the uh, Vienna Lager, a.k.a. Was, Mexican Amber Lager? Mexican Amber Lager was fantastic. It's that was nice, really right, because you get a little of that malt, but not overwhelming, yes. and it's got that clean, crisp lager finish. Yep. So a lot of times people come in here, 
uh, and they're, you know, they're scratching their head. What should I get? And, and I'll ask the typical questions, you know, do you want hoppy, not hoppy, light, heavy, whatever, malty, yeah. not malty. And, you know, if they just, they're like, I don't freaking know. Yeah. I'll either start them with our day drinker, light lager. Yep. <clears throat> especially if they're kind of domestic beer drinkers. But a lot of times I'll put them in the, uh, the Mexican amber lager because it's just a, a beautifully done beer. Yeah. It's um, not as, you know, light um, or even, I mean, Doc can correct me if I'm wrong, but doesn't quite have the, the slight bitter structure at the end that the German style lager does. And it's just a crushable beer. Yeah. And if they like that, then we kind of go from there. It's interesting because our Pilsner, which I'm addicted to, for people that maybe drink PBR or something like that, it's like they weren't expecting that. Sure. Because they probably yeah. haven't drank beer in Germany. Yeah. Um, so I'm oddly cautious. Like I'll generally recommend the Pilsner to someone that's got a little bit more history with like European style beers. Okay. Right? Kind of know what they're getting into. Kind of know what yeah. they're looking for and what yeah. they like. Um, and that's always fun. I sit at our bar a lot. Uh, after work and just kind of eavesdrop a little or try to engage with people yeah. not only to make friends and l let them feel a little more connected to our business but also to just kind of walk them through maybe a new beer experience or if, you know if they don't they're not really feeling the beer oh you know let them try the the seltzer which doc yeah. has gotten close to perfected i mean it's come a long way and it's that's the it's tricky to make that, you know, yeah. I think it's kind of a, again, Doc can chime in. I think it's not overly complicated to make, but maybe even harder to, to not have off flavors in. Was that, so what would you say about that, Doc? Yeah. Yeah. So that's, yeah, he's right. It's, it's a labor wise seltzer uh, is very easy to make and very cheap. Okay. Uh, it's uh, but to get it right is hard because you can't hide flaws. I always describe brewing a light beer as like wearing a Speedo on the beach. Can't hide any flaws. <laughs> brewing a seltzer is like walking is that naked. A beer? Has that someone used that name before? Speedo on the beach? Spe you probably should, yeah. Sure. Well, seltzer is like walking naked in a mall. You, right. If you have any flaws, people are going to point at you and laugh. And you should you. see Doc in his Speedo on the beach. It's a at, by spectacle. The mall. <laughs> yes. a thing of beauty. <laughs> <laughs> they call me a light lager. <laughs> light lager. Extra, There's a lot of beer in there coming through there. <laughs> well, well, so Doc, I mean, that's a, that's a so you know, I'm, I'm good friends with Marshall from Simple Machine, and, and Marshall's making some really great beers up there, and, and there's been a demand for him to make a seltzer, and you know, he's a little apprehensive about. It. He's like, you know, I but for someone like Doc, right? You know, it, and when I first talked to you, Doc, is you know, um, transitioning from that domestic light beer to having him create his own, right? Where you where you, I think we talked about this. You, someone like doc you kind of expect a little bit of like dude i don't i don't make those type of things right but I that did. was it but did <laughs> i definitely <laughs> did he did on seltzer he okay. did on oh, light seltzer beer. Light, he did light on beer. light beer oh i was i had brewed a light beer before yeah, yeah. So I, but with seltzer you were like uh, i was like yeah, it's a trend it's not let's not <laughs> yeah he thought reputation. hazy ipas were a fad what uh, four years ago five yeah. years ago well you had the white rabbit before hazies were cool though too no right? we didn't no uh, we, that was his answer it. that it was, was that well, was we had a different hazy but yeah. even when we decided to make that one he was like ah oh, this is just a fad or whatever it is yeah and uh I learned some stuff. Yeah, since uh, gotta be open -minded. I went twenty years with trying to figure out how to make beer not hazy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's a good, the goal is to try and figure out how to not make it hazy. Yeah. Now kids want it hazy, and but there's more to it. And I was treating it like that, and I think that yeah. the beer suffered. Uh, I was just like, eh. <laughs> but then I started learning about bio transformation and the what happens if you add hops, you dry hop early in fermentation where the yeast is still very active, and that, that what it does not only to create a haze protein. Uh, that's fairly stable but to create a uh, flavor that's different than what the hops smell like. Yeah. To take something that smells like citrus and pine and turn it into mangoes and coconuts. Ah. And that's all uh, the science that's, that that's geeks me out. So now I'm like really into it. Everybody else knew it. Yeah. But I was fighting it and yeah. now I'm joining the party and I'm like, yeah, it's fun <laughs> to do these hazies. See, he's a smart little fucker. He, he is. He, 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 he I, just, can, I can see a little bit of stubbornness, but uh, just oh, enough yeah. to, to he, keep you stubborn. honest, right? He's stubborn. <laughs> And he does drag his knuckles, stubborn. but there's a working stubborn. brain matter up in there. 
<laughs> so so was White Rabbit the physical manifestation of of compromise? Is that basically what that no? Was? It was actually a, another beer that kind of led to White Rabbit and okay. White Rabbit, which wasn't even called White Rabbit, I don't believe at the time. I think we named it a little bit after, but it just hit. Yeah. Like it is beautiful. There's a lot of hazies out there, um, locally and in California that have an, uh, a flavor that to me tastes like kind of wet hay. Um, uh, okay. Okay. Yeah, that grassy, I can't stand. Sure. Alfalfa. And yeah. yeah. And ours does not. Ours definitely leans a little more, I guess you could say citrus, but, um, yeah, it just became, it, it for a while there, it was our fastest growing beer cause it was yeah. probably number nine on the charts and then rose to three or something or four pretty quickly um but yeah it's uh it's a damn good beer and it pretty is. popular and yeah talking about rabbit right yeah. Yeah. Rabbit, rabbit, yeah. rabbit's number one is it number it's one been number one for a while holy wow. shit oh, really in-house no it is easily number one i saw light other lager camp. was light lager is number two Wow. Well, there you go. You got a new <laughs> horse at the lead there coming around the band. That is surprising me because you can, you know, if you're a light lager drink, you can drink four or five yeah. plugs. You, White Rabbit, you're, you've are got to be checked out at about three Yeah, three four or pints. five of those. We need to yeah. look in your eyes before we can start. Swan diving into an Uber. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Jumping onto the rabbit in Tempe, you know, hanging yeah. out by the water feature. Yeah, yeah. that's that's wild. I, I didn't realize it had overtaken day drinker. Yeah, on our taps, it is number one. Okay. What about uh, there was a hazy that I had yesterday? That was that that. Uh, oh, the wedding beer. Is that what that is? Did you have the hazy in love? That must have been what it was because yeah. I don't know if it was on the menu. I think they just tapped it, and the dude was like, "Hey, if you're looking for a hazy like this, is you know we got the white rabbit, but there's also this. Is that Tiffany's? Yeah, there's Tiffany a cool and, story behind that. Yeah. So uh, I had a bee problem in my house. I didn't know I had a bee problem. I uh, had a a bird problem. Birds, uh, the tree in front of my house, and poop everywhere, and trying to get rid of the birds out of the tree. So I, um, I got a plastic owl, hung it from the tree. Yeah, <laughs> I think I, they have a hole in the bottom, and I stuck a, uh, clipped a branch that was sticking straight up, went up the tree with a ladder, stuck it on the branch. Well, a few months later, I saw that the owl was uh, kind of leaning to its side. So I go up there and um, get on a ladder, extension ladder, way up the tree. Get up there, and I have a stick reaching up to this owl, trying to straighten it up it falls and it doesn't make a hollow owl sound when it hits the ground it made a thump and then bees everywhere it was full of full of uh, bees is why it was leaning it was heavy and so i had to climb down the ladder through all the bees uh they were all all the bees i've ever had at my house are friendly they don't sting anyone yeah Uh, but they were everywhere we called a a local bee mead guy who you may know of uh, carvin 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 Wilson. He, I don't know. He huh. is legendary mead guy. He travels the world to talk about. Uh, I got. He's a local guy. Yeah, I got to meet him. Yeah. Yeah, I think he has a house here, but he uh, he sold some patents and smart guy, and now gets to pursue his hobbies. Well, he happened to yeah. be in town. I did a Facebook post. If anybody knows how to uh, remove bees in an ethical way, and uh, he shows up with a Traeger smoker gun, like a handheld smoker. Yeah. Put a couple of Traeger pellets in it. Smoked the bees out, picked them all up, put them in a bee box in the back of his truck, and set them going down to my uh, ranch down in southern Arizona. And he goes, by next spring, I'll have five gallons of honey for you. So wow. uh, we had this honey. It's uh, been fed on just uh, ragweed, milkweed, and mesquite down there in the Chiricahua Reservation. Okay. And uh, it uh, created a beautiful honey that had this earthy note. <coughs> Excuse me. A frog in my throat. <laughs> <I can tell> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, so John and Tiffany were getting married, and I, I said, "Well, you have to brew your own wedding beer. You know, what are you going to brew?" And John is your John is your John's one of our brewers. Yeah, uh, great and guy. And Tiffany uh, Fowler. Tiffany Fowler. Yeah. Previously, Tiffany. Yeah. Fowler, now yeah. T, she used to be T Fowler. Now we call her T Chains. T Chains. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, yeah, they came in and they didn't want us to be around. They came in on a Saturday and brewed yeah. the beer together, and yeah. it is incredible. So it's a it's a hazy. IPA with, uh, he used a lot of oats and, you know, traditional ingredients, but he uh, used uh, mosaic uh, cryo hops in the dry hopping and uh, El Dorado in the kettle and uh, several days into fermentation, dropped that honey in there. And uh, wow, it's all the sweetness of the honey ferments away, but it left all that earthy note from the the desert botanicals and it's, uh, it's quite the beer. 
It's fantastic. Well, because I don't think it was on the menu. So just kind of connecting the pieces right now is kind of an advantage, right? Because you normally, you're, I mean, the goal of putting something on the menu is to kind of paint a picture for somebody. Sometimes not having that picture, like if myself, like I'm open to like whatever. Like it was just, I just tasted it as the beer. And now Doc just told me the story. And yeah, we're pretty sure blown. they made sweet, <laughs> sweet love in the brewery. <laughs> I hope so. Watch your head. Yeah, we came back and the uh, we have chalkboards and all of our fermenters and uh, you know you write the specs of the beer and the date you brewed it and all that. And we come back and the chalkboard on that tank just said, "Girl, we hazy in love." <laughs> <laughs> we loved it. Oh, that's great. Well, that's full circle too, right? Because that's that you know um, you know I've been doing this since like late 2016, and all of the people that I've seen, uh, you know, like Gus Fowler and, and Tiffany. I thought Tiffany and Gus were the you know, brother and sister. For, I think they even told me that they're brother mm-hmm. and sister, right? So, but either way, um, so many people have come through the pedal house. Uh, I don't want to say factory because it's not a factory. The pedal house community uh, in in this, you know, and I know I know we wanted to keep this towards the food, but I keep coming back to that's all right. right? <laughs> but so much impact on the the beer community, and so many people that are doing great things. That yeah, pedal well, house old like Gussie boy is opening his own brewery yeah. here pretty soon. Yes, I can't wait for him to. Uh, that's downtown. Yeah, safe just haven. Walking right. distance from here. Yeah, so. Oh yeah, yeah. It's across the street. Three blocks. Yeah. Three blocks now. Nice. Well, I mean, that speaks the volumes of what you guys are doing at Pedal House. So, well, it work. It's no mystery that a lot of brewers want to work for Doc to yeah. uh, soak up as much knowledge as they can. Well, they never, wanna... They'll never soak it all up. There's a lot nah. to soak. But <laughs> he keeps creating more. I've got the best best crew back there. I mean, I really we do. We yeah we. I, I wouldn't be given so much credit of if it wasn't for the guys that are. You know, I'm sitting here eating Hawaiian food and doing a podcast. There's beer being made and yeah, beer sure. being filtered and yeah. beer blanche. In fact, is is being made today. So nice. they are the best. And uh, even with John on his honeymoon, he's in Spain right now. Uh, we brought in a new new guy who's got great experience and just more than just a good brewer the these guys have chemistry they're all friendly and professional we yeah. we have no problems uh pointing out our flaws to each other and just we, we, you know we, we want to identify how we can get better constantly and there's no hard yeah. feelings amongst us we do it internally and try and try and always correct each other and we get better uh and he's he's a new addition he's great he came from santan uh another great company that farms up good brewers for sure well they definitely yeah. did not fuck up this white rabbit <laughs> no this is fantastic <laughs> this is a uh, very good doc nice good. glad you like it isn't that tasty mm-hmm. god do you get the it's actually been a there? long time since i've had it Sneaky. because there's so many in between that i've like i right. can't you know like i've had that i'm gonna try this yeah you get mango and coconut in that one right i mean we're trying to talk about food here so I'm trying, you know i'm not real good at identifying things we don't put mango or coconut in it but there's a definitely mango and coconut yeah that's what i would say <laughs> yeah one of the hops we use is a they call it a neo mexicanus it's a ah. newer new mexican type variety i guess it's yeah. a, i think it's a dwarf variety so if they start growing it they can use uh the grape harvesting equipment because instead of the stuff that goes all the way up 14 foot trellises for hops yeah uh, you know grapes only go up so many feet they can use that stuff right after grape season they go in and do the hop season with that ah. saves a little money which makes things a little more sustainable for farmers but this particular hop when you add it early on it throws coconuts it's crazy what it does yeah. so i've been wanting to do a, like a black ipa with it because it would just be just different having more of a coconut note in your yeah. ipa if it's a dark beer and almost kind of borderline on like a coconut stout or something like that yeah porter or something something yeah. like that but with that hoppy coconut yeah. flavor so yeah. i take a black one day IPA, yeah maybe. yeah we uh we can't keep up with our current beers and our walk-in's pretty crowded right now so <laughs> adding a, you know, another dark uh, beer is building a new production facility i was gonna ask about that yeah. I, 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 i'm glad you brought that up because uh you know, I get to see some little sneak peeks being Doc's, you know, friend on Facebook. He has little things here and there. I don't know if you've shared with him that you're sharing I didn't know the people secret were still location. On Facebook. <laughs> <That's>, 
I, I was concerned I about you. I haven't been for two years. <laughs> well, yeah. Uh, all right. You know, uh, maybe I'm, I'm, I should wrap that one up. But uh, I did cancel my MySpace recently. Oh, so, nice yeah. job, I was buddy. bummed about it. I was holding on for, you know, I'm like, it, ha- it has my theme song on there. Well, I was going to say, what, what was your theme song? <laughs> I don't, it don't changed. Remember. It changed all the time. That was the best thing about MySpace. You Dude. could have music. Yeah. yeah. You really had that? Like, I've heard of it. Just like oh, Snapchat. I MySpace, heard of it. Oh, MySpace was yeah. awesome, dude. Mid two thousands, you could do. Shit. There was even like kind of like uh, kind of coding a little bit, where you could have like your you could have like a playlist of songs, and you could choose like it rotates through, and then you can do your own back. Dude, that was awesome. Like it's like you created your own How website. They messed that up, right? How has like Instagram or Facebook not? You know, well, maybe Elon Musk can buy them. Maybe yeah. bring them back. Buy and mood. He's bring gone. back the music. <laughs> bring back the music. <laughs> I just learned something recently about uh, Snapchat. I've never used it, but I, I understood the premise that pictures disappear. Yeah. Unless someone screenshots you. <laughs> and I was like, well, yeah, clearly you can screenshot if someone <laughs> yeah, sends you a picture. Speedo but, video be out there <laughs> yeah, forever. But that sends, <laughs> that sends a message back, I guess, to the person who put it out there that someone screenshot screenshotted it. that. Yeah. That's, that's great technology for privacy, but... Yeah, it is. It, it doesn't pr- protect your privacy. It just lets you know that there's a person, <laughs> I guess. Protect your privates. <laughs> I'm so glad no one Snapchatted me because I would have probably screenshot it. Uh, I'll just say, I mean, just knowing the three of us, I'm pretty glad that social media hit the time, right? I think the three of us, like college with a cell phone on social media. Well, like, right. hey, that, in some ways, good. I totally agree. In some <laughs> ways, I wish I had video of some of the crazy oh, shit for sure. that I'm happened back in the day, especially yeah. my first or second bar technique. Well, my first one for that matter. We'd be the coolest guys in prison to talk about this stuff that uh, because of videos, if mm-hmm. if they had that back in the 80s, we'd be in trouble. But we'd be people like, wow, you guys really did that. Mm-hmm. I sure did. Well, luckily, we're not in that position. So full circle, the future of Paddle House. Like what is you got three locations right now. You've got the production facility. Let's talk about that a little bit. You're you're yeah on the horizon. Uh, so probably all happening by the end of the year or actually by the end of like first quarter next year we've got mesa okay nice. opening in downtown mesa um a patio only slightly smaller than tempe's so pretty massive nice much smaller indoor footprint where at, can you say approximately yeah, right where downtown so downtown Maine and robson nice so across from uh cider core right next door ah. to bri's yeah, and same row of buildings as nice. BRI across the street from um, that spot. That w- uh, little worth area right there. Takeaway, worth takeaway the right chicken there. place, and Chupacabra. Gus's Oro. chicken. Freaking love that place. That's a good spot. I love that you can get fried chicken and a bottle of Vuv Clico in Gus's chicken. Did <laughs> I don't you know, know what Vuv Clico is. It's what is that? It's a $100 bottle of champagne. Really? <laughs> <laughs> you can get that and a fried chicken sandwich, yeah. dude. Hell yeah. Good so for those I guys. do that one of these days. Um, so you've got that. Ma- so that, yeah, and that's pretty much kind of bar only, if you will. We don't have a kitchen. Okay. But we'd be dragging out a grill on the weekends and cooking up backyard barbecue, oh, burgers. Nice. Um, Guest chef. I yeah, know he's Doc a, I know he's a, a barbecue speedo, guy. Yeah. If I have anything to say about it. <laughs> I'm telling you, we're going to do a beer. Tap that AZ beer with you guys. Uh, what was big it? hairy <laughs> ass in an apron. <laughs> Snapchat it. I'll be right there yeah, next Snapchat. to him doing the ketchup and the mustard. <laughs> <laughs> you, you in? You in? <laughs> oh, he's in. He's in. Oh, for sure. He might not say it on the microphone, but he's in. He, he did wink twice. <laughs> I do it every day at home. Why not? Not in the backyard. Why the work? difference? Um, and then, yeah, the, uh, then the production facility, which actually come online first this summer, thank God. Desperately need that. Well, it has to. Yeah. That will have open a tap room. Beer otherwise. For sure. For sure. That will have a tap room, that, but that, that won't open until probably Q1 2023. Okay. Production facility with a little tap room. Yeah. Actually, yeah. a pretty cool tap room. Yeah. yeah. And then we'll start doing brewery tours. And Can I ask where that's at? Yep. It's. Um, you can ask. Chandler. <laughs> in Nevada Street and Warner. Yeah. We could hit a golf ball to Santan. Okay. We can play like ping pong with them. They could hit it back and we can. Yeah. Yeah. Which is kind of cool. It it just worked out that way. We're yeah. looking. We're mostly East Valley because we want to be close to Doc's house. Um, but uh, it ended end up like barely a nine iron away from yeah. uh, where Santan brew. So they're up for it. It'd be fun to kind of collaborate on some tours and, yeah, you know, drive people from the downtown Chandler over to the two breweries and back. 
thinking we'll get the city to put a bridge in, pedestrian bridge. From one to the other. We'll call it the Brewer's yeah. Bridge. The Brewer's That'd be Bridge. Cool. Dang, man. Right now they're... And We're going to make sure you get full credit for that one, unlike this table oh, that's situation. Right. Hey, it only happens all you, buddy. Downtown get Chandler gets credit or it doesn't yeah. happen. <laughs> you get that bridge done, I'll be impressed. <laughs> I know what it takes to get this table done. <laughs> and I'd, be thankful for the You're dealing with Phoenix. And we uh, are part of a group that's opening a food hall in the airport, so we're the anchor kind of bar in the middle of it. Oh, wow. Nice. A food hall, like a, like a food court type of thing where it's open and... Not going yeah, to each individual spot. I forget spot. how many, six restaurants all in kind of one big room. Yeah. But in the middle of that room is an island. It's got the Petal House Brewery and bar, some seating. So she's back there singing again, right? Yeah. She's back yeah, there. She's, yeah, yeah. she's on she it. Should, yeah, let's get a microphone on her. This is great. <laughs> so, <laughs> that is a good sign, though. I like it is, that. right? Yeah, I love that. Uh, so anything else? Anything else you guys want to share? Anything, what's, what else is on the horizon for pedal house or or you know doing any other places you're opening well we're still still trying to get our arms around the phoenix location as far yeah. as just ops go um it's pretty typical for six months there's a lot of staffing changes and operational changes and little things that you do to kind of really get in a groove um but i do look forward to being able to deploy this brewers 20 seat brewers table and get back to doing some beer pairing dinners yeah uh, we're definitely doing that freaking cheese and beer pairing dinner. I think that's awesome. Yeah. Because I like cheese and beers almost as much as you do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> almost. Almost. Pretty dang close. And yeah. then I think, you know, we might try to rock a, a vegan beer pairing dinner. I think that'd be kind of fun. Yeah. Well, I love it. I mean, this is, so uh, this past weekend, um, I don't know if you're familiar with uh, Brett Vibber. Uh, used to be the chef up at Cartwright's Wild Arizona Cuisine Forager. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we brought, right? yeah, when yeah. I came to Saki House, yeah. I brought one yeah, of his chefs with me. That's, that's oh, really? With nice. That was my Saki date. House, yeah. Ah, yeah. Who, who, who came with you? Uh, uh, Justin. Justin? No way. Yeah. yeah. Mohawk guy. Mohawk. Yeah, he yeah. used to have a Mohawk. Yeah. Um, he well, wants to get together today. He literally was texting me. I was on my way yeah. here. <laughs> nice, dude. Well, they just had a Cannabis on the Creek event up in yeah, uh, up in Oak Creek. And that was that place is fantastic. Um, I got to say, the he's the one who made my pizza oven. Justin is? Yeah, he makes pizza really? ones from uh, scratch. And uh, his very first one was sitting up on a Mortimer Farms up there in yeah. Prescott. And he saw my Facebook post where I was getting frustrated with this backyard pizza oven I had that mounts to my pellet grill. Yeah. And uh, he's like, I want to see you step up your game. So he nice. gave it to me. No way. Yeah, so oh, now I make pizza every Sunday. Yeah. That group of people, like what they're doing, you know, community roots. I don't know if you know Josh from, you know, where I have a farm over in Santan Valley and Mark Ryan, the farmer dude with the tie dye shirt on. Mm -hmm. One of the guys that's been, was with him for a while, moved to the, you know, Verde Valley and he's doing some cool stuff. But I had a point to that whole thing and I can't remember what it was. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. That white rabbit sinking <laughs> white into your fishy brain matter. <laughs> I keep hitting this thing too. And then I'm concerned because yeah, I'm like, this is not a very sturdy foundational yeah. pole to this no, place. Seriously. We'll knock it down. We'd rather have it yeah. happen now than when we're open for business. For sure. Yeah, that's for sure. Uh, here's where I was going with that is, uh, so they had 20 people show up for this dinner. Right, it was a high end dinner, it was like almost $200 a person. But they had 20 people show up. People come show up to to experience quality. To ex right, you got this. What do you got? 20 seats here, mm -hmm. right? Have just man, I go for it. I'm excited for it. Yeah, that that's really cool because it's you guys are servicing all these different aspects. This is, I mean, this is kind of like the coup de gras, right? This yeah. is the this is the gem. Let's have them down here to do that, yeah, yeah. What would they forage? It's all, it's all forage food, right? Well, it, it's it's a combination. I mean, and that's what's interesting, right? Because you think of like, I'm like, how much shit can you forage from? <laughs> I'm not even right. taxed Inner city. With, Ain't no yeah. sales yeah. out here. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe there are. Oh, there's <laughs> gum on the bottom of the table. It's still out yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, but, but they do a combination. So Brett actually goes, I don't know, two months out of the year, he goes to Alaska, works on a fishing boat, does the labor. So now he gets that fish for lower costs so then he can so he supplements what he forages in arizona with high quality products and he knows you know beef farmers chicken farm like everything and the dude doesn't stop and like he's just it's in his blood to to do what he does that's cool yeah, yeah. so uh he and that, tammy singer are the inspirations are yep yep i saw she, her this weekend did you really? She was at the wedding. The whole Cotton and Copper crew came yeah. to the wedding. Ah, that's so cool. Like, that's they great. just, uh, well, so uh, Tamara was, uh, 
she when I did an episode, she was the one that really got me into food, right? So I was into really into beer, and then when I did an episode with Helio Basin, like can our chef joined, I'm like, yeah, sure. And she just blew oh, me away. Yeah. I'm like, holy shit. Like, you can forage. Like, you can hop over that fence and use these juniper berries. How lucky was it that they got hurt? Yeah. Did they know what they had? I mean, we, we went yeah. up there a few times. Like, wow, this food is outstanding. Unreal. Well, wow. it, well you see where she's at now, right? Yeah, yeah I've yeah. been there. Have you been there? Yeah, my brother lives right by there. So No way. I That's... went up there last summer while she was, they first opened and it. it wasn't that popular yet because it used yeah. to be like a... You know, corn dog type of shack. Uh, okay. You know, the place on the on the where the boat dock was at. Yeah. People can get snacks, but they uh, really stepped it up when they brought her in, and the food was incredible. They have yeah. a wine list, and it's uh, my, go? my niece works there. Oh, really? She, yeah, she's no a way. server there. She's coming back, I think, because she's about to finish school for the summer. So yeah, going back up there. Man, well, full circle, Brett and Tamara and all the people doing wild shit. It's wild beers, wild cheese, whatever the hell you guys want to do. I'm in. Wild dance <laughs> like, parties. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And we got these <laughs> six poles. <laughs> well, they're not very sturdy, I'll say that. So, you know, so I careful can't, spinning I can't on them. dance on them. You cannot dance on them. Yeah, it might get a splinter too. But, uh, no, it's a beautiful, sp- uh, beautiful space. And, as always, huge fan of you guys. Love what you're doing. Hey, man, we appreciate it. Yeah. It's fun. We get to drink beer and try to make a little money. I was going to make this thing go a little longer, but I feel like if we keep going, you're just going to keep feeding me beers, and I got shit to do today. So. Oh, man. <laughs> Jesus. We have three more beer podcasts to do. <laughs> got to pace myself. Awesome. Well, guys, hey, cheers. Thank you cheers, so much. Man. Appreciate you guys. We appreciate Doc, it. Doc. Always good to hang out. Seltzer cup is empty, but uh, thank you.